to start the gulab jamun i'm going to start with the syrup first so i've got two cups of sugar you can use raw sugar if you want i think they give you the authentic fiji flavor but um for this purpose i'm going to use white sugar then you need two cups of water i need to flavor my syrup so i'm going to use these cardamom shells that i've got they are not useful when it comes into putting it into the dough but they can flavor your syrup they still have plenty of flavor so i'm just going to put all of that in there and i'm just going to put four whole cardamom seeds just to add that flavor to it i'm going to put the syrup on the stove to come to a boil now i need to bring it up to a boil on low heat because i want all the sugar to dissolve before it boils if you boil it really fast what happens is when the gulab jamun cools, the sugar becomes crystallized in the gulab jamun. So you don't want that. You want the sugar to all melt before you bring it to a boil. And that way your sugar doesn't crystallize. The other thing is sometimes when you're boiling sugar, you'll see crystals sitting along the side here. Now again, when your sugar syrup comes to a boil, it'll crystallize as well when the syrup soaks into the gulab jamun only because again your sugar turns to crystal if you don't tend to dissolve all the sugar so this is an important part for making your syrup to stop the sugar syrup from crystallizing as well i'm just going to add a squeeze of lemon for the dough i am going to sift one and a half cups of plain flour To that I'm going to add two teaspoons of baking powder, a half a cup of milk powder, a quarter cup of very fine semolina. Now if you don't have very fine suji you can get your coarse suji and grind it but mine as you can see is powder so you need powdered suji in here. I'm going to add half a teaspoon of freshly ground elati or cardamom and I need a grating of nutmeg, so I'm just going to gra grate some fresh nutmeg in here. Don't want too much, probably an eighth of a teaspoon, a quarter of a teaspoon would be too much. Alright, so mix that all together. You can definitely add more elachi if you want, but I think there's elachi in the syrup as well, so it's just it's going to be too strong if you add too much to it. But the flavour, you can adjust yourself. I've got two tablespoons of ghee and what you want to do is rub the ghee in. I am now going to add one tin of condensed milk. Now you want full sugar, full fat condensed milk, not the light condensed milk. Use your hands and you want to bring the dough together. Don't knead the dough. If you knead the dough, it um, overworks the protein in the flour and your gulab jamuns come out like solid hockey pucks. So very gently. You just want to bring it together. Just going to scrape the last of my condensed milk out because I've got a little bit of dough left there.
you know, just to make sure the dough is all together, that's it. I have been very gentle and I didn't want to knead it too much. At this stage, I'm just patting it just to make sure it is together. So you have a, a slightly sticky dough that's still a bit wet, it's not dry, but when you press it, it doesn't stick to your hand. There we are. I have covered my dough up with a damp paper towel. You can use a damp tea towel. This is to stop the dough from drying out and making it hard to roll. I'm also going to put a tea towel on top of it. And then I'm going to start forming my gulab jamun. Now before I do that, I'm going to put some ghee on my tray. Just a little bit to stop the gulab jamuns from sticking. So the size is up to you, but remember this does double or triple in size. So you don't want them too big. What I do is roll into a bowl, ball and then the classic shape of gulab jamun. So all I'm grabbing is about a teaspoon bowl. If there are any cracks, I can see there's cracks in there. I'm going to start again. So I'm just going to roll it into a smooth ball and just lengthen it. You can get the kids to help with this. If your dough is sticking, just rub a bit of ghee. But my dough is sticky but not sticking to my fingers as such. So here we go, they're all rolled out. What I've done is I've done a first tray and I've put it again under a damp towel. And I'll put this one as well under a damp towel and I'll get my oil heated up. So before I get started, I've got a tray here, which is where my gulab jamuns are going to come out of the syrup with a piece of parchment paper or grease proof paper. That way the gulab jamuns don't stick as they sit there and dry. This is my syrup, it is hot and it is ready to go and I'll turn the flame back on again once I'm ready for it. And over here is my karai in which I will start frying. You can fry your gulab jamuns in oil only. I prefer a little bit of ghee in my oil or if you really want to you can fry it all in ghee. But for me adding a little bit of ghee to your oil actually gives you quite a bit of flavor and it's that authentic gulab jamun flavor you are wanting oil doesn't just oil doesn't give you that so say i've added half a cup of ghee to my karai the ratio is entirely your choice it's not something that we can go all right this much and this much i'm using canola oil you can use whatever oil you have got you can use rice bran vegetable oil there you want a good deep amount of oil because gulab jamuns when you put it in will sink and then as they fry they will expand so let let this heat up a bit you don't want your oil to be too hot because what happens is the gulab jamun will go black because of the sugar content in the dough so you pretty much want it at a medium heat or a medium low heat now I'm just going to keep it at medium and heat up the ghee slowly or the oil slowly and then I'll turn the heat down again. Okay, so my oil is up to temperature. The temperature you're looking for is 160 degrees Celsius or approximately 325 degrees Fahrenheit. I have turned my heat down to about medium low because I don't want it to be too hot and then I will gently slide these in. 
as you put these in your oil is going to cool down as well don't overcrowd it because these expand so I'm just keeping it at a few don't touch because it'll float up to the top Okay, so now you can start moving them around, especially the ones that have floated up. Because you want to brine them evenly. As you can see, they're very unevenly browned at the moment. Just waiting for these ones to come up. I'm just going to turn my syrup on again, but I'm going to keep it on very low. Just want to keep it warm. I can see the nice golden brown color, as in I don't want it to go any more brown than it is. And what I'm going to do is take it out, strain it well. Now don't use the same spoon in your sugar syrup because it'll splatter and burn you. So I'm going to put this one on this side. Bring my camera here. This is my sugar syrup. What I'm going to do is scoop out all these because I don't need them anymore. They've done their job. And then I'm going to put my gulab jamun in. They don't need very long. My syrup is warm to hot, quite hot actually. And I've still got the flame underneath it at the moment. And because I've put milk powder in it and suji or semolina in it, what's happened is the textures become quite fluffy inside and it absorbs the syrup really quickly and very well. I have most probably given this about 45 seconds to a minute and that's all I want for them. Now let those ones that I have taken out, which is just over here on this side, let it sit and it'll absorb the syrup as it's sitting. And then we go back to frying the next lot. The other thing to remember is when you've taken your gulab jamuns out, don't leave it sitting before you soak it in the syrup because what happens is um, it cools down too much so when I'm cooking it on my own I take it out of my karai here and immediately put it into my um, sugar syrup And all I'm doing is just moving it around so that it browns evenly. Because you can see one side is very brown but the other side is not. And my mum always said if they split like this, like they've split this one here, it's a good gulab jamun. However, other people say if it splits like that, it's got too much baking powder in it. 
but if you don't put enough baking powder in this again you're gonna have solid gulab jamun as in like hard hockey puck gulab jamun that you're really not going to enjoy so you need to make sure you have actually got enough baking powder in this as well for a second and just show you my sugar syrup is boiling so i don't want it to boil because otherwise it'll reduce too much i'm just going to turn it off because i know it's hot and when i take this next lot out it'll be quite warm enough coming back to here still going with this You can see that this side here is brown whereas the other side of this one is actually a bit lighter but once you put it in the syrup it actually evens out the color right, so i'm going to take it out into my bowl here just so that i don't track oil across my stove i like the color of these they're right Turn it well and as you've taken it out these keep cooking so they go more darker yeah put it there I've been traveling with my camera you can hear the sizzle that's what you want which is why you immediately put it in sizzles it's going to absorb that syrup quite well again be gentle because they do start falling apart and you don't want to leave it in there that long yeah i can tell they're soft on the outside so i don't want to go any more than that 